You know what sucks? The fact that we don't have a PS5? Well, yeah, actually. But nah, for real. You know what really sucks? The fact that Cyberpunk may get pushed to 2021? Well, yes, actually, but, but conscience, I write a script for a reason, you know. I mean, you asked me what sucks, so I told you what sucks. And that's great, but we have a video to do, my guy, so can you please follow the script? Fine. Golly gee, Dochi, what sucks? Just a little respect, that's all I ask. What sucks is that there are a bunch of dope Capcom IPs that just got lost in the sunken place. Ashura's Wrath, Darkstalkers, Beautiful Joe, Final Fight, the list goes on. Yeah, facts. And some of these series weren't even bad. They just got dropped. Like, why haven't we gotten a real Darkstalkers remake or a follow-up game? Like, for real, if someone knows in the chat, let us know, please. Within this abyss of forgotten IPs, lies one of the funniest and weirdest beat-em-ups we've ever come across. Directed by the same guy who directed Resident Evil 1 and 4, this game hits levels of absurdity that really makes you wonder why they didn't become more popular. Today on Honest Gaming History, we're going over the story of one of Capcom's many forgotten games, God Hand. Play that intro, son. God Hand was developed by the now defunct Clover Studio. The studio was founded and funded by Capcom, and made up of designers from R&D. A game you may remember that was developed by them was Okami. The game was directed by the legendary Shinji Mikami. As we said in the intro, this man directed RE1 and RE4. However, he also directed The Evil Within, and he and his studio Tango Gameworks are in the midst of developing a game called Ghostwire Tokyo. This is that dope-ass shinobi magic game that got revealed in E3 last year. And I dead forgot about this game until I started my God Hand research, so thanks for the reminder, research. Anyways, God Hand follows the story of a 23-year-old martial artist named Jean, who's been entrusted with one of the legendary God Hands. These hands come from a savior who had the power of God within his arms. A long time ago, the demon king Angra tried to take over the world with his army of demons. But this warrior came in and told him to stop it, then slapped him into exile. After the savior's eventual death, a clan was formed to defend the God Hands. So these crazy ass people ripped this dead man's arms off thinking it's some sacred weapon? Well, he did have the power of God within his arms, so. These video game backstories, I swear. Well, many years after that, the clan got attacked. They lost one of the God Hands, while one of the girls from the clan named Olivia took the other in order to protect it. But she failed in doing that by getting attacked by some thugs soon after leaving the destroyed clan. You know, for a clan of people who are meant to protect the God Hands, you'd think they'd be trained in giving the hands. This is where our boy Gene comes in. He finds the damsel in distress and attempts to fight the goons, but they whoop his ass, then chop his arms off. Jesus, that escalated mad quick. Luckily, Olivia feels for the young hero. So she gives him the God Hand to replace his right arm, and this begins their adventure together. But how is she gonna trust some random stranger she just met with half of a legendary weapon that can apparently either turn you into a god or a demon? I mean, you saw how trash she was at defending herself. Who else was she really gonna give it to? Plus, bandits are the least of her worries. Her main problem are the four devas. This is a demonic group whose goal is to resurrect the demon king Angra. It's led by the demon Belze. Within this group as well as the fat ass demon Elvis, the nymphomaniac Shannon, and the only human within the group, Azel. Azel has the other half of the god hands, but he'd rather go by devil hand because he's edgelord as shit. Facts, look at this Sasuke ass dude. I bet he smells like the death of his family. Anyways, the Devas recently felt the presence of the other God Hand, but they're not sure if it's legit. So after yelling about it, they decide to send Elvis to figure out if this is the real deal. Back to the protagonists, Jean and Olivia have set up shop at a hotel somewhere. Olivia stays here, basically giving out quests to Jean. And Jean thinks the bitch is crazy, but he kinda wants to smash, so the quest for Cheeks is still present in this one. After going out and beating the shit out of some twins, he runs into his first boss, Elvis. By the way, quick tangent, the fight system for this game is hella dope. Throughout the game, you continuously unlock new moves that you can string together in combos. And there are a lot of freaking moves. And the finishers are wild, son. You can do anything from kick an enemy out the stratosphere to spank someone to oblivion. It's like a beat em up absolver on a lot of drugs. Anyways, Jean prepares to fight Elvis, saying, and I kid you not, you can wax on, wax off all you like, I'm still kicking your ass. Yo, who wrote this script? Then after beating Elvis, the demon retreats in one of the weirdest cutscenes ever. He really gave it to me, all right.
What the fuck? So Elvis heads back to his comrades and confirms that Jean does indeed have one of the god hands. Then after more idiotic bad guy bickering, that ass these guys sound like Team Rocket, they decide to send Elvis again to capture Jean alive. Back to Jean, he runs into the same dudes who chopped his arm off earlier in the story. He gets some sweet revenge giving them the god hands, then he finds Elvis once again in a cemetery. He beats the brakes off the fat ass again, then lets him escape. And this part is all funny and shit until he gets back to the four Davis and tells him that he ate an old man with arthritis. Pardon, I had to help this old man with arthritis. I repeat, who wrote this script? With Elvis failing again, Belze sends Shannon to handle Jean, and she's already on it. Jean heads back to Olivia, and she shows him an invitation sent by Shannon to her massive hysteria. Her what? It's basically her circus for slaves. It's pretty fucked up. Olivia's like, welp, can't have that. So she sends Jean to go stop the demons and free her slaves. After fighting a gorilla and the 99 cent store Power Rangers, who literally roll out after he beats them. Next time we'll do you a killer ham. <laughs> Keep on rolling. He finds Shannon, and she low-key gets moist after hearing Jean talk down to her. Then he beats the shit out of her, because these god hands of justice are unisex. She then leads and heads back to her comrades on a dimension-hopping city bus. Yes, fam, a dimension-hopping city bus. Belze is tight because yet another one of his subordinates has failed him. So he sends a robot named Dr. Ion to handle Gene. Then he tells Elvis that this robot will take his job if he manages to get Gene. Damn, my man is about to lose his whole job to a robot. Back to Jean, he reconvenes with Olivia, and her crazy ass tells him to take down a giant ass fortress that's taking up something evil. Once he enters the fortress, he beats the brakes off the thugs who took his arm off again. Then he finds Azel. For the first time, Jean comes face to face with the other half of the god hands, and he actually manages to beat the dude. But before escaping, like all the other Davis did after their first match, he reveals that Olivia is actually his fiance. And Gene is low-key tight about this. How are you gonna tell this man to do all this shit, but neglect to tell him that your fiance is one of the four devas? Facts! And she knew he was on the subquest for Cheeks. How is she gonna lead him on throughout the whole game when she's about to have a husband? He moves on and finds Dr. Ion. Then he takes the robot out before it has a chance to escape. Now Belze is even more tight because all of his subordinates failed. Azza doesn't count as a failure though because apparently he was just evaluating Gene's strength. Shut up, Sasuke. Elvis asks for another shot, and Belze lets him go, but this time he allows him to use his demon form. Back to Jean, he asks Olivia about this whole fiance business, so she tells him her backstory. A while ago, Azza was also part of Olivia's God Hand protecting clan. He was arranged to marry her, but instead he took one of the God Hands for himself and became the embodiment of evil. So Olivia was entrusted with protecting the other god hand by her father, while the rest of her clan died trying to fight off Azel. Called it! The of his family! Right there! After hearing this, Jean accepts his fate and says that if Azel became a devil, then he must become a god. So Olivia sends him to his next destination, a floating bazaar. After fighting a bunch of musicians with the hands, he runs into Elvis for the third time. He starts talking his shit, then Elvis gets tight and transforms to initiate their boss fight. And Jean casually beats him, cause you know, he's a god. Then he leaves the demon to die, saying that if he wasn't so evil, then they could have been friends. Next up on the chopping block is Shannon. After the Davis found out about Elvis's death, Belzig sends her to handle Jean. And with Shannon returning, you know who has to come back? The Power Rangers on crack. Jean finds him and dead makes the leader cry by imitating him. Then he proceeds to beat the team Madara style. Get it? Cause Madara beat the five Kage and it's not funny if you have to explain it, don't you? Anyway, Jean proceeds to free more of Shannon's slaves, then deals with the psychotic earthbender. After that, he fights Shannon in her demon form and gives her them god hands too. Then after beating her, he leaves while the free slaves jump her. Now the demonic group just includes Belze and Azel. The devil hand laughs at how incompetent the other demons were, and Belze hits him with more bark and no bite. Dead ass. This guy has done nothing all game, but send people to fail. Then he talks shit afterwards like he's relevant. Bro, what are you even doing here? With that, Azel leaves to handle this in his own way, and he starts by kidnapping Olivia. Already a better move than both Elvis and Shannon. Gene heads to the final stage in order to save his girl, where he finds a devil hand waiting for him. They have their much awaited duel, and Gene wins because he's the main character. But as Azel accepts defeat, he begins getting corrupted by Anger the Demon King. Apparently this is all a part of Belze's plan. The Devil Hand refuses to allow this demon to control him, but he can't hold it off. So this man rips off his god hand and gives it to Gene. And this shit deadass just attaches to Gene's body like some Lego piece. Bro, how? How did you replace your arm in less than a second? This game treats arms like Kishimoto treats eyes. 
Now with both god hands, Gina weakens his true powers and gives Augur them divine appendages, then saves Olivia. And that is the end of God Hand. Unfortunately, due to a mixed reception, God Hand never got a sequel, and Clover Studio actually closed after its release. And while that does suck because people lost their jobs and stuff, most of the designers ended up moving on to better things, with a lot of them picking up work at Platinum Games. But how do you guys feel about the God Hand story? I don't think it needs a sequel. I do think it would be cool for another studio who cares about the IP to create a remake. Maybe Platinum Games or even Mikami's Tango Gameworks could do it. It'd be pretty dope to see Gina as a DLC character in Street Fighter. I mean, look at him. The dude belongs in that franchise. Yeah, Gina in Street Fighter 5 would be lit. Or even Gina in a Marvel vs. Capcom title. But let us know your thoughts about God Hand in the comments below. And with that being said, end screen. What's going on, fam? Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Honest Gaming History. And thank you guys for choosing God Hand because before this video, I did not really know about God Hand, but now I do, and I am much happier for it. Now, for real though, if an indie developer is watching this, please, please, somebody pick up the IP. I, I know it's possible. We did it for Streets of Rage. We could do it for God Hand. Let's just, let's just get this God Hand remake on the roll. We can do it. It would be hilarious. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like. Let's try to get this video to 1,500 likes in 20. Four hours. Comment tools you want to see me cover in future episodes of Honest Gaming History. Subscribe if you want to see more of what I produce and hit that bell notification button so you stay updated whenever I upload new videos. Shout out to my dope ass patrons. Without you guys, I would not be able to make videos like this. And if you are not a patron but would like to become one, go to my Patreon page in the description below and find out how you can support the channel for as little as a dollar a month. And one of the perks you get with that is watching these videos earlier than anybody else. But that's all folks, so as usual, be easy, stay lit, black lives matter, stay healthy out there, and don't forget, you can do whatever the hell you put your mind to. All it takes is practice and time. Peace out, y'all.